Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering and analytics with Alteryx and Spotfire. If you don't really want to watch a video, you can find the written version of this post on my website, shown on the screen. If you learned something today, please do me a favor and share this link on social media or subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's go. Using a workflow output as an input in the same workflow can be really tricky. So how do you make sure the output is completely written before being used as an input? A few months ago, I showed how the crew macro tool called parallel block until done can be used to control the order of operations in a workflow so that the output is fully written before the input is used. The crew macro creator, Mark Fritsch, reached out to me recently to tell me that my solution wasn't wrong, but there was a simpler way to achieve the same task. And so he bestowed some sage Alteryx wisdom upon me and now I wanna share it with you. Thanks to Mark for reaching out and also for giving me even more of his time to refine this post when my notes weren't quite sufficient. So in this video, we're gonna look at two different workflows that achieve the same objective. They both use the same dummy starter workflow. And the actual workflow I applied this in is long and complicated and fairly difficult to use. So I've simplified things pretty dramatically. And what I want you to assume is that these tools right here are essentially doing all of the heavy lifting or the main processing that your workflow would be doing. And then as you can see, it writes to an output. And that output needs to be used as an input in a process farther on down in the workflow. Before this is all over, I'll explain why you might want to do this because I know some of you are wondering. Let's take a look at the solution components and what exactly is going on here. First and foremost, I have a block until done tool. And this tool is assuring that the output gets written before anything else happens. The rest of the tools are essentially creating flow. You'll notice that I have a text input tool and this is really just providing the full file path that's going to be used in my dynamic input. I also have a summarize tool that is creating a count of the distinct wells in my data set. And then it's appending that count to the single record that is created by the text input tool. And so I just said that this is all creating flow. That count isn't really used anywhere at all. It's just really the anchors that I need in order to keep things moving in my workflow. My dynamic input uses the full file path that I provided in my text input, and that's how I'm able to query the output written here as an input here. Without the flow created by the summarize and append, and append fields tool, it would look like this. And then essentially the connection is broken between them. There isn't any way for the block until done to do its work. You might be thinking, why not connect directly to the dynamic input tool? And that's the second solution. Another option is to simply skip the summarize and append tools and go more directly to the dynamic query. And to do that, instead of using the text input tool to provide my file path, I have used a formula tool, but before that I've used a sample tool to ensure that only one record is actually going to be fed into the dynamic query. Now, even though I'm only going to use this one column, I don't want to have, let's see how many work, how many records do I have? Uh, yeah, I have over 35,000 records and I don't want to feed all of that into this dynamic query. I just want to feed one record and one file path. And of course the block until done is still here to ensure that this output gets written before it's then queried in the dynamic query. I think I struggled with this problem more before I knew about using dynamic queries. If you've only ever used input tools and didn't know how to use dynamic queries, I think this would be a much more complicated problem to solve. Now, before closing this post, I know some of you are probably wondering why you would ever want to do this in the first place. There's several different use cases that I can think of. This would work for writing Excel sheets in a specific order, or perhaps if you needed to use an ending balance as a starting balance. And in my particular use case, I needed to run a very specific monthly process and compare the outputs of that process to the same process that had happened on the previous month. And so I was doing a lot of file overwriting and I just needed to control what step in the process was happening before files were overwritten. The moral of this post is that there are tools and ways to start and stop processes, 
So hopefully you learned something new. Thank you so much and subscribe and share if you learned something. Thanks.